Hi everyone, welcome back to another painting episode with me, Sherry, Brush Tips with Sherry. Today we are bringing a little bit of the beach in. So we came up with this awesome painting, actually Abby did from uh, the studio, came up with this awesome painting of waves kind of crashing up on rocks. So I figured what perfect thing to do than to paint this beautiful painting in honor of her because she's so awesome, an amazing artist. So we have some really fun colors today. We have basic colors too. Actually, we forgot the raw sienna, so I might have to sneak over there and get some here in a minute. But we have the turquoise color, phalo blue. You want the two different colored blues, one for the water, one for the sky. We have the burnt umber, black, white, and then I'm going to sneak off here, over here, and I'm going to grab this raw sienna color. And that is going to be the color of our sand. Our sandy color. Right here. See how easy that was? <laughs> all right. And, of course, our brushes, our famous brush. They're all wet. Our famous brush here, our big daddy brush. This one does most of the work. He's the biggest. He takes care of all the background. We have a little medium brush here that helps with any of the bigger details, but one that, you know, maybe the small one would take forever to do. And our little tiny baby brush right here. So, again, the big brush, medium brush, and baby brush. We encourage you to use whatever brushes you feel comfortable using, okay? Our first brush that we're going to start with is the Big Daddy, so go ahead and just get your brush wet. Dry it off on your paper towel, and we are going to scoop the white and the blue. I like to scoop it up just like I'm scooping up a big chunk of cereal. And I'm just going to start mixing on my canvas. I like to mix on my canvas for a sky because the sky's not really a super solid color here, so we want it to be a little bit more where it's not too mixed. And then don't forget about your sides, too. And I would say, let's go down about a hand width, okay? Depending on your canvas and how much sky you want. If you want more sky, then go with more sky, but if you want more ocean, go with less sky can always go a little darker as well. And don't forget your sides and your top. Pretty easy to do. And just go all the way across. Now if your paint's not moving or you feel like your canvas is maybe a little bit too dry, you can always wet your paint by wetting your brush and then wetting your paint. Okay. Just going to go a little bit darker through here when it starts to hit the regular water. This awesome beach life. Perfect. And of course, mine looks a little crooked. I really think that my canvas, I don't think my canvas is crooked. Maybe I'm going to stand right in front of it. My canvas is not crooked, my painting is. So, don't paint to your side like me. Paint straight on. I just don't want to make it crooked. There we go. I think that's better, right? Let me turn this way and look at it. There we go, perfect. Perfect. So now, while my top part is drying, I always go to my sand and start putting that on. It helps break up um, some of the dry time with the blues, okay? I really made this kind of big, but that's okay. I'm going to clean off my brush really good. And a good trick for cleaning off your brush is to almost treat it like when you're washing hair or maybe washing out a mop too, like in the bottom of a bucket. You just put it on the bottom of the cup and just gently swirl it around. If you can hear, I'm swooshing it around on the bottom of the cup. That cleans the bristles 
And then I only have dirty paint water and not a dirty brush. See how that works? So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to put the sand on. The sand is this raw sienna along with the white. And we're going to go at a little bit of an angle here, okay? And just throw it on there. There's no right or wrong way how to put this on either. It's just wherever you want it, and you can just go straight with the raw sienna as well to add a little bit of depth. And again, don't forget about your sides. And and the bottom as well. So when you go to do the bottom, you can put your canvas to the side like this. And you can hit the bottom. All right. And boom. I'm going to check it. Let's see. We'll put put my artistry to the test. I mean, not bad. Definitely not bad. We do our sides because when we hang them up, we hang them up on a wall, pretend like this is my little nail, and we don't put a frame around it, then the sides are done and it wraps all the way around the canvas. Now there are some artists who do not at all paint any of the sides, okay? And that's all right. Every artist is different. Now I'm going to clean my brush because I'm going to go in with this ocean color and I want to make sure that I get all of that brown out of my brush. I'm going to go in with the ocean color and then we're going to put the rocks on, okay? And then there's going to be a couple more steps, but we need some dry time here. So this is just our base coat. I'm going to grab just straight, straight blue of this turquoise color, okay? We're just going to add it on here. I like the straight turquoise or aqua color. Don't forget about your sides again. Then as you start to go down further, you can start pulling some white in. Even if you just kind of mix it to the side. Add a little white or a lot of white, whatever you feel. And just like that, super easy. Just our base coat right now, okay? Just adding that quick base. And you can kind of go in a flow, make the paint work for you. See how it's kind of looking a little flow, like water. Okay, I'm going to let that dry a second. Because we want to add a cluster of rocks over here, okay? So, we're going to let it dry. I personally like to get a blow dryer and blow dry it. If your paint is super thick, we encourage you not to use a blow dryer because all it's going to do is put a little um, drying layer on the top. You kind of want it to dry on its own if your paint is super thick. But if it's thin like mine, you can always just grab a blow dryer or a fan or you can just let it sit. Let it sit, go have a snack, maybe pause. Take a little break, walk away for a minute, and come back. It'll dry on its own, I promise. And with acrylic, which is what we use, it dries fast. And that's why we use it, because it is a faster drying paint. When you have an oil, sometimes it could take months for oils to dry. Sometimes people put them in the oven and bake them a little bit, which is okay way to do it. Um, but it has to be on such 
like a tempered heat. It's crazy. Oils are hard to work with. Um, and watercolors. Watercolors are great too. Those have to kind of be done laying down a little bit more than up on an easel like this. Especially if you're a beginner because the water, when you go to put the water on the paint and then put it up here, it might drip down. So definitely lay it down on something when you're a beginner watercolor person. All right, let it dry. So impatient. I should just stand here. I should fan myself. There's nobody here to fan. <laughs> All right. So this part looks pretty dry right now. Even if it's not and we get a little bit of the sand color in, that's okay. The black will cover it. I'm going to take a new medium-sized brush. I just want a different angle. I went with the square rectangle looking one instead of the diagonal one. Take some white because these rocks are a little gray and this black and this brown. And kind of pull it all together into one little spot. And let's start with the big rock first. Okay. And we're going to wrap this guy around. Bring him out here. Add a little bit more black in. Let's see. Maybe make a couple layers of rocks here. You can go deep. Like if you want a lot of rocks, add a lot of rocks. If you just want a few rocks, just add a few. But it definitely needs to be a little messy along the edges. So don't try to make it a straight line. Okay? Almost be shaky with it. Okay? Shake, shake, shake your hand. We've been watching a little too much Beetlejuice lately. See how I'm just dabbing along the edge here, making it look like there's like random rocks? And I can add a little shadow in here. That's going to help. Pull some of the depth of the rock in. Sorry, I was lost in my rock painting. <laughs> <laughs> I have never painted this painting before, so I am right along with you with not knowing what I'm doing. Actually, I do know what I'm doing, I just don't, you know. Little baby rocks here. I kind of like the way that this one rock over here kind of goes up and then comes down. Add a couple little guys there. And I'm going to let this guy dry. I'm going to rinse off my brush because I'm going to darken up some of that sand around there. So the way she did it on here was she took this brown, this darker burnt umber, and mixed it with the raw sienna. Okay. And just made that raw sienna a little darker so that way it looked like a shadow. Plus the, ra the waves are going to be crashing up on it, so we want it to look like wet sand. Okay, So in between, just come in and hit this just like that. See that? And don't forget about your side. You can go darker. If you want to just go darker with the darker brown, you can do that too. Okay. Can you go up here? Oops, I think I hit it. I think I hit the black. <laughs> I wanted to get some of that black off there. I guess I could have used my... I probably shouldn't have used my apron, but that's all right. That's what they're here for, paint mess, our paint mess. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I'm going to bring in a little bit more of this raw sienna with a little white. 
Actually, I went too light there, so I'm just going to smear it out. That's good. Go a little darker with that raw sienna. We go darker here because this is where the wave's going to crash. Okay. This is where our water is. All right. Are you loving it so far? I think it's looking pretty good. I mean, for never painting this guy before. All right, we're going to rinse this brush off really good. We're going to add some depth into the waves. So, you can see that on some of it, it's a little bit darker and some of it's a little bit lighter. This is where the waves come in, where you want to make it a darker wave or a lighter wave. It's totally up to you. So if you want a darker wave, you're just going to come in just with the dark. You're not going to add any white to it, okay? And I'm almost skipping, like I'm skipping a rock, okay? If you had some green, you could totally put some green in here as well. Then you can come in with the white. And right next to this, just super light, barely, barely touching it. Now, if you get a lot on there like, whoops, I just made it too thick, that's okay. Look, just smudge it out with your finger and look, it just softens it right back up. There's always ways to fix our mistakes. There's definitely always ways to blend them into the painting as well. So let's move to the back row here. Look, I just went really dark with that. So I'm just going to grab some blue. There we go. Add some of that blue in there. Perfect. Soften these guys up. Now you can make this water as choppy as you want. If you don't want it super choppy, you don't have to have it choppy at all, right? So we're going to let that dry a second. Actually, we're not. We're going to go right into the waves. I'm nervous about this spot because it's not dry all the way. Let me dab some of this paint off. Let's do the clouds next. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do the clouds next because we want this guy to dry before we add the white on top of it. So the clouds are kind of the same way. We're going to take our brush. Now you can just start to dab it out with your finger. My finger has some brown on it, so I'm going to have to switch, switch fingers. I just put a little bit on, and then I just softly smear it. People make clouds different ways. A fan brush would work for this, too, if you wanted to do a fan brush paper towel if you don't want to get your finger all wet. You can even kind of smear it like this. Make a little bit of those. I don't even know what those clouds are called where they like skim across the sky. Let's clean it. Get this brush a little wet. Okay. White again. White again. And do that same thing. Just soften it up. You can make your clouds as big as you want also. They don't have to. If your finger is too dry, like mine has a lot of water. Oh my goodness. Mine has a lot of um, paint dried on them. So you can even wet your fingers too and wet your paint on your canvas. That's okay too. Oh my goodness. Now my eye hurt. Probably got paint in my eye. If that happens, just go to your bathroom and rinse it out of your kitchen sink. <laughs> Sometimes mistakes happen. <laughs> Fatalities of the painted eye. <laughs> All right. So here's some more just kind of stagnant clouds hanging out. Is it, would that be the right word? All right. Now we got our clouds on and we kind of build up our layers. We just let them, let them grow. Maybe we'll add a couple birds in here too. I don't know. We'll see what happens when we get to the end. Okay. 
Now we'll start over here with our waves. I'm going to take that same brush, okay? And let's go on with this main dark wave first, okay? Then I'm going to come over here with another little wave. And you see how I just did a solid line? Okay. Then I'm going to take what tiny little bit of paint is on my brush. You see I barely have any paint on there. And I'm just going to softly run it across. This is called like dry brushing. Okay. Then I'm going to dab along the edge here. Kind of like what we did when we started the clouds. We just kind of dabbed it on there and then smeared it out with our finger, which is what we can do here. If you like it to be a little bit more of a defined wave, you don't have to dab it out with your finger. You can just let it set and dry. Okay, and we're going to do that same thing back here to this layer and even here, okay? Use that dry brush in there, pull some of that water. You want to still be able to see the sand underneath, okay? So dab, dab, dab. You got to bring these waves up over here. Give them that little, that little bit of, what is that? Like ocean mist right? The spray, the ocean spray. And just keep dabbing it out. If it's too much, you can always fill it in. A little bit of white. <laughs> I obviously have Beetlejuice stuck in my head. All right, and then just keep smearing it out. Dab, dab, dab. Around here, we're going to get this little ocean wave. It's like a backwards, no, it's like a frontward C. We want the spray though. Don't forget the spray. You want the ocean spray to go around it. You see how I'm doing that? The ocean spray around it going to come up here and do this big one. It's like a big wave. Oh, I think I went a little too big with him, but that's okay. We're just going to keep going. Dab, dab, dab. Smack it out. We're almost just, it's, it's, we're not, we're not going smooth with the whole thing like this because we don't need to. We need to dab the whole thing. So all we're doing is a bunch of like dash marks inside the wave to fill her in. Okay. And then don't forget about your ocean spray. There's no right or wrong way to do the ocean spray. Again, it's just however you like it. If you like it to be really thick, then make it really thick. If you don't want it thick, you don't have to make it thick at all. Okay, mine's a little thicker than Abby's. I've got a little bit of an aggressive wave here. Maybe it's hurricane season. We don't know. <laughs> it's basically whatever we want it to be, right? I'm coming back in, making these a little bit darker here. Filling in. Making this waves a little bit more dominant around these rocks, okay? Oh my goodness, this is looking fantastic. I'm sure yours at home is looking phenomenal as well. I mean, it's not as great as Abby's original, but she had a little bit more time than I did. <laughs> so I'm going to add another layer to my clouds since we're here, and I want them to have a little bit more depth. It just kind of helps after it's dried a little bit. You can hear my finger on the canvas. Canvas is so dry. I'm kind of loving this. This is looking pretty good. I'm excited to see everyone's at home. I love when people share them with me. 
they either message me or send them an email or whatever they do. Um, a lot of people tell me, look, I painted this along with you, and it's so awesome. It's one of my favorite things to see is when people just take the time at home to create and get super out of their comfort zone because sometimes painting is not in a lot of people's comfort zones and that's okay. Um, but I'm just proud of you for even trying. So with the rocks, you see mine are dry now. You see how the on the original they're a little bit gray. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little black with a little bit of white and it's just going to give a little bit of depth. Did you see how that pulled in just a little bit of depth in there? And it doesn't have to be that light. Mine are a little light. All right, there we go. Even up in here, remember we had to uncover that a little bit because it wasn't dry. Perfect. There we go. Now, everyone, sign your masterpiece. That is the very next thing to do because you are finished. You have completed your beach life painting. You now can tell everyone how amazing you are by owning your painting and just putting your little initials here. And just like that, friends, that is how you become an artist. Thanks for watching and we will paint with you soon. You are watching WCTV, Wadsworth Community Television.